Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be tackling the cooling system on the 1985 Ford F-250. A few red flags that convinced me to tear into the cooling system were number one, the lower radiator hose sounded like it had a full bag of Lay's potato chips in it. As we pop off the radiator cap, we can see some nice delicious spicy habanero sauce just chilling in the radiator. Note to self, always pop open the radiator cap before you buy. As the water spews out everywhere but my bucket, it starts off semi-normal with a little bit of discoloration in the water and then it just turns into just straight up rust water. Just straight up dark orange brown. Me kneeling down to realize I missed the bucket completely. I think we're going to have a lot more work cut out for us than we originally initiated. Well, here it is in all its glory. And yes, your eyes do not deceive you. Those are rust floaties at the top. The radiator hose is just lined with a thin layer of rust. Actually, all the uh, rubber hoses throughout the entire tooling system have that Lay's potato chip sound effect. I think these coolant bypass hoses may have it the worst. The inside of this coolant bypass hose just it looks like it's made out of steel. It just it's completely rusted out. Next was the heater hose and I think you guys are going to be pretty shocked when you see this. They're completely impacted with rust and like rust crumbles. So I got the thermostat housing all popped off. Obviously this is also full of rust as well. I would later come to find out it's also kind of warped and it wouldn't seal properly so I was having a coolant leak. As we look in the intake itself, we can see that it's full of rust as well. Better, lots of surface rust. We're gonna have to do multiple flushes I think on this truck. I'm almost positive that the water pump is probably seized and completely full of rust as well. So I did the right thing and I got a new water pump. I could have went cheap and just kept the water pump and just done a bunch of flushes with it, but it didn't seem right. Plus, it was only 40 bucks. Obviously, I'm getting all new hoses, upper and lower radiator hose, new coolant bypass hoses, new heater hoses, and uh, I figured, you know, since I'm here already, uh, might as well get some new belts on it as well. It has a little bit of a squeal when it first starts up. And then, as you can see here, uh, yeah, it's just like straight crack city on these belts. I mean, these things are ready to go at any moment, so uh, I figure I put some fresh ones on there and yeah, call it good. I also cannot wait to clean up this engine bay. Whew. All right, so update on the water pump. Holy smokes, dude. That's crazy. As you can see here, yikes. So I'm thinking maybe the previous owner he, he was having cooling issues. I'm assuming it was overheating a lot. So that's why he took out the thermostat because when I opened this housing up the first time, there was no thermostat at all. I finally put a new one in because whenever I ran the truck, I never had any issues uh, with overheating. It just actually would never ever get to like operating temperature. It would take forever, probably take like 40 minutes just running at idle. Since the truck never got to actual operating temperature, it kind of ran like trash. I was also having like a vapor lock issue as well. The truck would just stall at random times and then I would notice that there was like no fuel in the, the float bowl. I'm not sure if it's just because of the gas that was already in there that wasn't good or maybe like the fuel pump, the diaphragm had dried out and just kind of taken a shit. So, I mean, since I already have all this stuff taken out, I'm just going to put a new fuel pump in it as well. I mean, it's only like 30 bucks. I'm going to start using a higher octane of fuel as well because maybe the previous owner maybe had put 87 in it and I know that I've had trouble in the past using 87 and it vapor locking on me. So we'll try 91 and see if that solves the issue. I ended up running new heater hoses through the heater core, but it ended up proving to be kind of an issue. I would still sort of overheat. It never went like, it never pinged all the way to like, you know, hot. But I mean, it did get about three quarters of the way there and it was kind of annoying and it would always happen at night too. Pretty sure that that heater core is probably just like rusted all to hell and there's probably just a huge blockage that was restricting the flow of coolant. So what I ended up doing was I just ended up just bypassing the heater core. I ended up just using a 5 8 union and just like marrying those. After that, I had no more overheating issues. The truck runs cool as can be now. Cleaner engine bay about a month later. 
Uh, let me know if you guys actually want to see me like spray paint these valve covers. One of the other things I replaced was the radiator. I got this new aluminum and plastic radiator at O'Reilly. Shout out to Alex from O'Reilly for hooking me up with this. It was actually on back order, but he was able to find it at a distribution center in Denver. So shout out to that guy. You can see an old picture of the radiator here. It was pretty trashed and it was just full of rust. And this is the result after 3,000 miles. I actually just did an oil change as well. My coolant mixture, I did 60% uh, distilled water, 40% actual concentrated coolant and put some uh, water wetter in it as well stuff works great i did also change out that fuel pump and started using 91 had no vapor lock issues since then